on the second Sunday in Lent. If you're joining with us online, we are delighted to have you. You can find a link to the bulletin in the comment section or on our website. Blessed be the God of our salvation. Who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God, our neighbor, and our truest soul. God, we confess we don't return to you fully. We share with you the peace of our lives as our communion. We put on different hats and different rooms. We forget that we are called, invited, and loved with all that we are, including our mess, our beauty, our faith, and our doubt. Forgive us and give us hearts and all to return. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Friends, God sees you, God hears you, God loves you. Rest in that good news. Thank you. 
and they're on the wall still. Are they pretty uh, protective? Yeah, they're very protective. And when they have with other hands. With other hands. Now when they have little chicks, what do they do with their little chicks? The little chicks actually will follow behind the mother, like usually right here. There was a chick right here, and look, right there. Aww. And do they ever like go under their wings? Like, or not under their wings, but you know, like, when does she ever keep newborn? Aww. You know who else is kind of like a chicken? Jesus. Jesus is kind of like a chicken. God's kind of like a chicken. Because you know how Zach said that uh, hens can be very protective? And when their babies are little, like they like to stay close, you know, and watch them. God is like that for us. We're going to talk a, we're going to tell a story in a little bit, or Deacon Steve is going to tell a story about how, um, Jesus, you know, we're, on, we're getting ready to go to Jerusalem because we're in the season of Lent. And Lent is all about getting ready to go to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is like the Washington, D.C. of Israel. It's like where a lot of really important people live. And that's where Jesus is trying to get to. And along the way, people are like, hey, Jesus, somebody's trying to kill you. You need to, King Herod, like who's in charge of everything, is trying to kill you. You should probably, like, get out of Dodge. And Jesus is like, I cannot. I have to go to Jerusalem. I have to tell people about the message of love. I have to make sure they feel welcome. I have to heal people. I want to make sure that all those people come under me, just like little chicks go under a mother hen. So even Jesus says he's like a chicken. He's like a mother hen who's wanting to protect us. Do you think of any other animals that might remind you of God? Yeah. Probably yeah. like, um, like a hog. A hog? Okay, and how is that? What makes you think of that about God or Jesus? Jesus like that. Who oh, is he going to fly away? Is she going to fly away? She's not. Oh, okay. She might jump down, but she won't get far. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Troy. They are very protective. They're very protective. And so, this last week we talked about making good choices. This week, we're going to remember that Jesus, here, maybe you should take the little hint. You're going to take the hint? That's probably a good idea. Thank you, Ken. And thank you, Zach. Um, oh, boy. Uh, that, uh, Jesus wants to keep us safe, and that with God, we are always safe, no matter what happens. So in a second, I'm going to let you take this piece of paper, or I'm going to let you pick up a little creed to keep with you this week. Like last week, it was, I can make good choices. This week, it's, I'm safe with God. And then I want you to draw your image of what you think the mother hen Jesus looks like, or another animal that comes to mind that reminds you of how God and Jesus are always wanting to protect us, to keep us safe, like not letting us go, even when we do things that we shouldn't do, Jesus is not going to give up on us, which is pretty freaking amazing, because I don't know about you, but sometimes I get really frustrated and impatient with people. Do y'all ever get that way? Yeah, it's hard sometimes. Jesus doesn't phase one bit, doesn't ever get tired of us, which is pretty amazing. So why don't we pray? Dear God, thank you so much for being like a mother hen to us, watching over us, protecting us, and being with us even when we go through hard times in life. Amen. 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 All right, I'm going to go on to you. So y'all get to pick up a sheet of paper and a little creep, okay? Awesome. And thank you, Brian, for bringing your hen. <laughs>
after these events, the word, the Lord's word, came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your protector. You, you, your regard will be very great. Your reward will be very great. But Abram said, Lord God, what can you possibly give me since I have no children? The head of my household is Eliezer, a man from Damascus. He continued, since you haven't given me any children, the head of my household will be my heir. The Lord's word came immediately to him. This man will not be your heir. Your heir will definitely be your very own biological child. Then he brought Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you think you can. Count them. He continued, This is how many children you will have. Abram trusted the Lord, and the Lord recognized Abram's high moral character. He said to Abram, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as your possession. But Abram said, Lord God, how do I know that I will actually possess it? He said, bring me a three-year-old female calf, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a dove, and a young pigeon. He took all of these animals and split them in half and laid the halves facing each other, but he didn't, he didn't split the birds. When vultures swooped down on the carcasses, Abram waved them off. After the sun set, Abram slept deeply. A terrifying and deep darkness settled over him. After the sun set and darkness had felt, had, had deepened, a smoking vessel with a fiery flame passed between the split open animals. That day, the Lord cut a covenant with Abram. To your descendants, I give this land, from Egypt's river to the great Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 27 responsibly, alternating verses. God is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? God is the strength of my life. Of whom then should I be afraid? Though an army should encamp against me, yet my heart shall still not be God. And if the Lord should rise up against me, yet will I put my trust in God. One thing have I asked of you, O God, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in your house all the days of my life. To behold your fair beauty, O God, and to seek you in your temple. For in the day of trouble you shall keep me safe in your shelter. You shall hide me in the secrecy of your dwelling, and set me high upon a rock. Even now you lift up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer you in your dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to you. Hearken to my voice, O Most High, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, O God, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant from displeasure. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, you will sustain me. Show me your way, O God. Lead me on a level path.
wrath because of my enemies. Deliver me not into the hand of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and also those who speak mouths. What if I had not believed that I should see the goodness of my God in the land of the living? O oh, tear and awake the God of pleasure. Be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At that time, some Pharisees approached Jesus and said, Go, get away from here, because Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go tell that fox, Look, I'm throwing out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will complete my work. However, it's necessary for me to travel today, tomorrow, and the next day, because it's impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who were sent to you, how often I have wanted to gather your people just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you didn't want that. Look, your house is abandoned. I tell you, you won't see me until the time comes when you say, Blessings on the one who comes in the Lord's name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Open our ears to hear, O Lord. Open our eyes to see. Open our minds to understand. And open our hearts to love. Amen. Amen. The little country schoolhouse was heated by an old-fashioned pot-belly coal stove. An eight-year-old boy named Glenn and his brother Floyd had the job of coming to school early each day to start the fire and warm the room before the teacher and, his, and their classmates arrived. One morning, when the teacher and classmates arrived, the schoolhouse was on fire. They dragged Glenn out of the flaming building. Glenn was more dead than alive. He was unconscious and had major burns over the lower half of his body. He was rushed to the nearby county hospital. From his bed, the badly burned, semi-conscious boy faintly heard the doctor talking to his mother. The doctor told his mother that her son would likely die, which was for the best, really, for the terrible fire had destroyed, the, had devastated the lower half of his body. But the brave boy didn't want to die. He made up his mind that he would survive. Somehow, to the amazement of the physician, he did survive. When the mortal danger was passed, he again heard the doctor and his mother talking quietly. The mother was told that since the fire had destroyed so much flesh in the lower part of his body, it would almost be better if he had died, since he was doomed to be a lifetime cripple with no use of his lower limbs. Once more, the brave boy made up his mind. He would not be a cripple. He would walk. But unfortunately, from the waist down, he had no motor ability at all. His thin, his thin legs were all but lifeless. Ultimately, he was released from the hospital. Every day, his mother would massage his legs. But there was no feeling, no control, nothing. 
Yet his determination that he would walk was as strong as ever. When he wasn't in bed, he was confined to a wheelchair. One sunny day, his mother wheeled him out into the yard to get some fresh air. This day, instead of sitting there, he threw himself on the ground and pulled himself across the grass, dragging his legs behind him. He worked his way to the white picket fence bordering the lot. With great effort, he raised himself up on the fence, then stake by stake, he began dragging himself along the fence, resolved that he would walk. He started to do this every day until he wore a small path all around the yard beside the fence. There was nothing he wanted more than to develop life in those legs. Ultimately, through his daily massages, his iron persistence, and his resolute determination, he did develop the ability to stand up, then to walk haltingly, then to walk by himself, and eventually to run. He began to walk to school, then to run to school, and to run just for the sheer joy of running. In college, he made the track team. And in a track meet at Mad Madison Square Garden in New York City, this young man who was not expected to survive who would surely never walk, who could never hope to run, this determined young man, Glenn Cunningham, ran the world's fastest mile. He eventually established the Glenn Cunningham Youth Ranch for troubled kids in Kansas. It is estimated that he and his wife raised about 9,000 kids on their ranch before he died in 1988. As I discovered and read this story this week, I was drawn to the determination of this Glenn Cunningham and how it was described by the writer of the story. I couldn't help but notice the parallels of this story and the story we hear about Jesus in today's gospel. Our gospel story begins with the warning from the Pharisees to Jesus. They told him, go, go, get away from here because Herod wants to kill you. As I think about that story in my mind's eye, I see Jesus stop. Perhaps he scratched his head or rubbed his chin. He thought about his answer. Perhaps he had two or three different things in his mind to say. And I do so hope that in that scene, he let the Pharisees linger in the silence. Can't you just picture the Pharisees looking at each other and wondering? There is much discourse about this story by historians and biblical scholars. Some opine that the warning is genuine and that the Pharisees are concerned for Jesus. Other scholars have offered their theory that it, is it was amused that they really were focused on getting Jesus out of their way for any variety of reasons. But Jesus, well, he thinks about this warning and what's his response? He says to the Pharisees, I've got stuff to do. I've got serious stuff to do, important stuff. So you go tell that fox, Herod, I'm throwing out demons, I'm healing people, and I'm going to do it today, and I'm going to do it tomorrow. Can you imagine the scene? Jesus saying, I'm going to do it today, and I'm going to do it tomorrow, and I'm going to do it the day after that, and the day after that, and I'm going to heal, and I'm going to preach. And I'm going to cast out demons until my work is done. And if you're the Pharisees, what is your reaction? They might have been thinking, we thought we could get Jesus to go. We thought that, that would have, we could have found favor with Herod if Jesus had only listened to us. Or perhaps just as likely, they're shaking their heads collectively, wondering what kind of death wish Jesus has. It's reasonable to think that this message that the Pharisees brought to Jesus would be accepted as pending danger or threat. It is also reasonable to think that Jesus, were he a normal human being, would decide to preserve his own safety and flee until the time was safe for him to be there. 
the Pharisees in this story and the doctor in the story about Glenn Cunningham have some similarity. The doctors, you see, think that Glenn will die, and when he doesn't, they say that it would have been better for him to do so. And the Pharisees, they warn Jesus, but he does not heed their warning. Jesus and Glenn had different ideas. They had different goals than the doctor or the Pharisees. And they had a determination that was grossly underestimated and misunderstood. Eight-year-old Glenn had his white picket fence to hang on to as he did his work. Day by day, week by week, month by month. It was him and the fence as he worked to bring his legs back to health. He dragged them at first, then a shaky and lopsided walk, and little by little to a normal walk, and then the victory and the glory of being able to run, running all the way to a world record. Jesus didn't have a white picket fence per se, but what he did have is the unending, unconditional, healing love of God. He knew why he was there, and he knew the work he had to do. And well, honestly, Herod and the Pharisees never had a chance. And in the midst of all of this, Jesus had a message for them. He said, how often I wanted to gather your people, just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you didn't want that. He's telling them, and us on this day, that this love is never ending. He's telling them and us that this love is unconditional. He's telling them and us that even in spite of everything that we have done in our humanness, that no matter who we are, what we have done, his love is ours for the asking. No matter our sexual orientation, our skin color, our political party, rich or poor, or whatever other label you choose to attach, his love is ours for the asking. Just as the hen gathers her chicks, Jesus is waiting and wanting us to come to him. Who or what is the fox in your life right now? What is keeping you from the love of Jesus Christ? What is stopping you from accepting and sharing this unconditional love? From accepting and sharing this unconditional love? He bids you to come and walk this road to Calvary where he gives his life for you. Jesus is the white picket fence. Grab on. Grab on and pull yourself into his loving arms. Hold on to that fence and teach yourself to walk and run in the light and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We did last Sunday, as we will do throughout the season of Lent, our affirmations of faith are based exclusively on our scripture lesson. This week, our affirmation of faith is based on Psalm 27. I invite you to stand and turn to page 9 in your bulletins. Let us affirm our trust and our expansive, loving, and faithful God. The Lord is our life. The Lord, Lord surrounds us like a warm and familiar pillow, and the layers of grace we shall not fear. The Lord is a sturdy foundation the roof over our head, we are not afraid. When the world is at its worst, when grief clings to our bones, when fear eats at our confidence, when loneliness moves into our house, God sets the table, turns on the lights, and invites us to dance. So that even though there are days that feel like too much to bear, we know we are not alone. So we ask the Lord, we seek 
seek and we pray. Let us live in your house all of our days. Amen. So let us wait patiently for the Lord, trusting our merciful God to hear us. We pray, hearken to our voice, O God, when we call. Have mercy on us and answer us. Almighty God, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us citizens of your heavenly kingdom. Show us your ways, O Lord, and give us the strength to stand firm. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Patrick's Church and School, D.C. Hearken to our voice, O Lord, when we call. Have mercy on us and answer us. Forgive us, gracious God, for the violence and anger in our own hearts. Open our ears and hearts to listen to your prophets and heed their call to repentance. Hearken to our voice, O Lord, when we call. Have mercy on us and answer us. We long, O God, to behold your fair beauty. Open our eyes to the beauty all around us inspire our hearts to sing out and make music to you. Hearken to our voice, O Lord, when we call. Have mercy on us and us. We pray, O God, for all those who have no place to call home. In their day of trouble, keep them safe in your shelter. Hide them in your dwelling. May they find housing in this life and a home with you. Show us to confront systems of inequity that keep people from always having enough. Hearken to our voice, O Lord, when we call. Have mercy on us and answer us. Lord Jesus, you desire to gather your children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. Be the light and salvation of those who are lost and alone. May all in need know your goodness and mercy. Cammy, Jean, Tony, Diane, Jenna, Emily, Deanna, Colleen, Wendy, Sally, Donna, Diane, Jim, Jack, Joyce, Barbara, Ed, Rogers, Dick, Tom, Vera, Irene, Barbara, Nancy, Noah, Betty, Bailey, Ron, Joan, Karen, and Ralph. Hearken to our voice, O Lord, when we call. Have mercy on us and answer us. Lord Jesus, in the fullness of time, make all things subject to yourself and transform us with all your saints, including Harold Edwards, Steve Cook, Maud Ann Drinks, Bunny Armstrong, and Ronald Rayer, that at the last we might be conformed to your glorious likeness. Hearken to our voice, O Lord, when we call. Have mercy on us and answer us. Oh God. Forgive us when we fail to entrust ourselves to you, thinking that we must have it all figured out, when instead we invite us to come as we are and with all that we are. Receive now what we bring to you, our weary, hopeful, determined selves. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus will not command legions of angels nor ride the machine of holy war. He will become a slave, take hate into his heart, and win us with forgiveness, for he is God's unexpected peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. You may be seated. 
candidates are ready to join to welcome you at this time. We will now prepare for Holy Communion by bringing forth the fruit of our life and labor unto the Lord.
valley of dry bones, you create hearts of flesh quickened by the Spirit's breath. We thank you, wise sister, that you walk in cloud and fire with your lost and faithful people. We thank you, Son of Heaven, that you empty yourself of might and glory and set your face toward the fickle crowd, the cruel empire, the faithful despisers. We welcome you as God's own fool, whose cross brings to nothing the violence of the world and reveals another wisdom outside the city walls. Therefore, with all who follow your way, with the traitors and tax collectors, the soldiers and the abused women of the street, and all who caught a glimpse of glory and the humanity you shared, we worship God's own holiness revealed in sweat and tears. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We ask that your Holy Spirit will fall upon us and upon these gifts. These fragile earthly things may be to us the body and blood of our Lord and brother Jesus Christ, who on the night that he was betrayed gathered with his faltering friends for a meal that tasted of freedom. Calling them to his table, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. And so, on that night, so here and now, he offers himself in touch and taste beyond all words can hold. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, in our eating and drinking, we are filled with the life-giving presence of Christ. We proclaim him as creation's host, transforming poverty into plenty and the reckless generosity of love. Inspire us with the hope that one day death and greed will be no more, and people without number will come from east and west, north and south, to share this kingdom new. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Mother and Father, blessing forever and ever. Amen. And now, as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy name be come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, not because you must, but because you can. Come, 
You are invited. This table is for you. And now behold who you are. May it be come what we receive. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit be with you this day and always. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blessing, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit be with you and keep you safe forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit be with you and keep you safe forever. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, fill you with peace, hope, and comfort. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. The body of Christ, for Jesus loves you very much. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit be with you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
lead us in our brokenness, so that none might be lost. Liberate us now to share bread with our neighbor, each receiving from the other what we need to be ourselves. Amen. Y'all need to see it. I'm celebrating a birthday this week. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, we are thrilled to have you. If you're with us online, we are also very thrilled to have you um, and welcome you to participate fully online um, or in person as is comfortable for you. We will continue with our Lenten series of looking at a different um, person who was present at the crucifixion this week and how they kind of experienced that holy week. That'll be Wednesdays at 8 on Zoom and Facebook Live in the evening. It's for all ages. And then on Friday mornings, our, seat, our former senior Warden Sill is leading uh, morning prayer at 8 a.m. on Facebook Live and Zoom. A youth group will meet after the service today. He's going to the Hamilton Room. We'll get started eventually. Uh, as mentioned in the midweek news, we are making, the church is making a donation to Episcopal Relief and Development, which is working closely with Lutheran World Relief and other organizations um, supporting refugees fleeing the Ukraine. Um, on your way out, there is a little handout that you can pick up to learn more about that. And if you would like to make a donation directly, there's information on that form where you can send a check. You can also donate online to episcopalrelief.org to learn more about their work in the world. Um, it came to the attention of our parish administrators that for those of you who do an automatic payment for your pledge on Realm, for some reason in the transition from 21 to 22, it stopped. Some people, for whatever reason, um, I think she might be sending an email out this week, I'm not sure. But if, but if you do do an automatic payment, you may just want to check online to make sure that that is still taking place. If you intentionally stop, completely understand uh, things we recognize are very financially uh, tough right now and uh, precarious for many people. So that is completely understood. No worries there at all. Uh, this month we're collecting, for our backpacks at Avery Turner, we're collecting breakfast bars and Pop-Tarts. So next time you go to the store, if you'll pick up a box or two and bring it with you next time you're here, that would we would be grateful for that. Also, uh, we will be uh, providing breakfast for the teachers at Eva Turner Elementary for Teacher Appreciation Week, which is in May. And also helping out with kind of like a run, a thon, field day-ish experience in May as well. But there'll be an informational meeting for all those interested in helping out on Tuesday, March 22nd at 4 p.m. at the school. Going to that meeting does not commit you, but it does will provide more information. So if you're interested in that, um, please let me know because I have to turn in a list in advance to the school. Um, yeah, we would love for you to participate with that. Holy Week is going to be here around the corner, and I just want to like keep pushing it until it's here because I know there's a lot going on. If you've never experienced Holy Week, which walks through the last week of Jesus' life, the services are incredibly powerful and moving and very interactive, and we have not been able to do them in two years, so it will be really meaningful. So that first Sunday on April 10th is Palm Sunday. In between worship services, we will have a Holy Week Family Festival for people of all ages with different prayer stations throughout the church or activities that will walk you through each day of that week. And then on Thursday, we will have a Lenten soup and salad agape supper. Agape means love, and it is a meal that we will have a simple meal uh, here at the church at 6.30, and then we will process together into the church for the Monday service. Uh, foot washing and stripping of the altar. Foot washing is entirely optional. You don't have to do it. You don't have to wash anyone's feet, and you don't have to have your feet washed, although I must say it is a very uh, humbling experience uh, to actually have, oh, please for me, to have, your, to have my feet washed and to do it to others, too. So I do invite you, and even if you don't do that, after that, we then do the stripping of the altar, um, which anyone who's ever been here, I think, can attest it's probably one of the most moving services all year in which we darken this church to complete blackness and everything that adorns it is removed 
to symbolize the stripping of Jesus's own body. And then we finally end by washing the altar with a mixture of water and vinegar to symbolize the water and vinegar that flowed from Jesus' side. It's very powerful. So I do hope you'll come to that. Uh, that will be on the 14th of April. And then on the 15th, which is Good Friday, is that when spring break starts? Okay. Well, not only on the school. So the rest of y'all, I know y'all are here. And I'm on spring break. But for the rest of you on spring break, every Episcopal church will be doing something. So I do hope you'll take a break and go. But if you're here, I hope you'll be here for Good Friday services at noon. And also that we will have our labyrinth set up in the Hamilton room, which is looks like a maze, but it's not a maze because there's one way in and there's one way out. It's a prayerful walk. Um, so he'll be to do that. So April 10th through the 17th, put it on your calendar. And Sunday Easter, and we'll be able to say the A word again, and we'll have an Easter icon after service. Um, anything else? I think that's it. It's a lot. Um, I'm, I know I'm forgetting something. Oh, we make this announcement every year, and only like one of y'all take two or take a look, and maybe one or two more people will take it up. Which is that if you have thought about singing the choir, but you're not sure, the perfect time to check it out is during Lent and Easter. They love to have fresh voices, join for the Easter chorus. So if you're interested, see Holly or any of these choir members or hang out after the service um, and they do a short practice, it's not hard. I think that's it, is that it? All right, please stand for the blessing. As you go forth into the world this week, know that Jesus Christ longs to wrap you in arms of love and acceptance and embrace. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you're going, Jesus waits to remind you of your belovedness, your goodness, and your purpose and destiny, which is to love and to be loved. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Spirit be with you and remain with you always.
peace and know that God is with you. What are you going to do? Let's try that again. Lord, you read us a song. One, two, three. 